Hi everyone, it's Leslie from GMO Free Idaho, and I wanted to do this video blog today to talk about the not so sweet side of sugar. So, most consumers don't even really know that the majority of our sugar comes from genetically modified sugar beets. GMO sugar beets have been on the market since 2005, and they um, make up 95% of the sugar beet industry which is very interesting. It reminds me of the canola industry and the fact that um, people can no longer buy and plant conventional canola. It's just not out there because GMO has completely taken over the market. And in fact, Jenny and I were talking with Phil Gersten, who's the al um, alfalfa farmer that we've been working with. He's in a lawsuit with Monsanto because of the contamination of his crop. And he was telling us that a lot of his sugar beet farmer friends um, can't find conventional sugar beet seed, and so they're having to resort to GMO even if they don't want it. Recently, there has been some really good news involving genetically modified sugar beets, and that is that a judge in California ruled that um, the USDA must stop all planting of GM sugar beets until proper and valid environmental um, impact studies could be made. And those studies will be done and they'll be complete around 2012. Of course the USDA responded um, not by taking this court order seriously but by deregulating uh, by partially deregulating GM sugar beets and so a lot of states will be able to plant them unfortunately. At this point though I feel that because 95% of the sugar beet industry is GMO um, how can we even recall uh, th this GM seed these crops if the impact study shows negative Ill, and Ill effects which I assume that it would but it might not be portrayed that way as seeing that the USDA is bought out by um, Monsanto the leading biotech company so now that we have a background about um, where GM sugar stands in our food supply, I think it's very important to address the bright side of things. And that is that we as consumers hold the power. And by voting with our dollar, we can decide whether or not we want GM crops um, in our food supply or if we want non-genetically modified foods. And so I thought it would be really important if I shared with everybody the alternative alternatives that I use to GM sugar. And I really hope that I can get some feedback and everybody else has some new and different alternatives that they can share with us. If you want to avoid GMO sugar, it's not like you have to avoid white refined sugar altogether. There's a great alternative and, it, and it's cane sugar. So instead of buying sugar beet sugar, you're buying sugar that comes from cane. And um, it's really simple actually to find. All you do is read the front label. It's either going to say sugar or it's going to say cane sugar. Always stick with the cane and you'll be GMO free. Another great cane sugar alternative is uh, sugar in the raw. Now this sugar isn't technically raw as in unrefined and uncooked, but it is more raw than white refined sugar. And these grains are actually a little bit brown and crystally and that's because they still have the molasses on them that's used to make brown sugar. And so if you like cane sugar and you're maybe looking for something a little less refined, then going with sugar in a raw is um, a good alternative for you. I know that a lot of people like uh, low calorie sweeteners and aspartame is a low calorie sweetener, but if you're trying to avoid GMO, then you should probably most definitely mm -hmm. avoid aspartame. And um, that's a whole nother issue, a whole nother blog in itself. But there is a great low calorie alternative and it's called Stevia. Um, this is stevia in the raw, and it's 100% natural, like really natural. It's, it's unrefined, and it comes from um, an herb that's found in, in Brazil. And this stuff is actually pretty strong. Uh, even half of this little packet in a cup of coffee is enough for me. But um, it's non-GMO, and when I was reading about this, I found out something that was very interesting. Just about the time that GMOs were put on the market in the early 1990s, stevia was getting really, really popular in the U.S. And um, 
the FDA actually refused to approve this as um, a food additive. And so even though it can be imported into the United States, it is not FDA approved. And it's an all-natural sugar that comes from an, from an herb. And other countries like um, Europe, they, uh, they love this sweetener and they use it often. So give it a try if you like something that's low calorie. Now we're getting into my favorite sweeteners. And I like to do a lot of raw desserts and I make my own dressings and sometimes I like a sweet and sour um, dressing. And I like to use uh, raw agave. Get a screenshot there. My favorite part about raw agave is that it's completely unrefined. And that means that it has living enzymes and nutrients in it. And this comes from the agave plant, which is like a cactus, that, and this um, people also make tequila out of the agave plant. And um, this is a great sweetener. It is pretty strong, so I don't like to use a lot if I'm using it for coffee um, or tea. But for raw desserts and making your own dressing, dressings, this is definitely a great alternative. Hands down, my favorite sweetener is raw honey. And this honey is actually local. I just got it here at the Boise Co-op, and I like to switch it up and try different varieties from local farmers, or farmers and sources, um, just to get a taste. Because when you're drinking raw pure honey, um, there really is a difference in taste um, depending on the source. Now I, I use this daily, um, but there's a conflicting feeling about raw honey, and that's that there is no guarantee that this is non-GMO. Because of bee pollination and cross-contamination, it's actually very, very likely that this contains GMO. Even if you're buying USDA organic honey, there is no guarantee that it's not GMO. And um, that's another topic as well, but organic certification is guidelines. That does not necessarily mean that people are checking their, their crop or their product regularly to see if there is cross-contamination. And um, the benefits of raw honey are enough for me to kind of overlook the GMO issue, which unfortunately I have to do um, because raw honey, just like the agave, it's full of living enzymes and nutrients and the fact that it's local is also one of my favorite aspects. So if you do like honey, I suggest buying it local. Just know that it's probably not GMO free, but that's a decision that you're going to have to make. Well, that's it. I've showed you the alternatives that I use to GMO sugar, and I know this video is a little bit long, but I think that it was helpful, and I would really love some feedback. I want to know what you guys think about the video, what you think about the alternatives, and um, give me any ideas that you might have or any other alternatives that you use. Um, until next time, I will see you all soon, and uh, thanks for helping us educate the Treasure Valley, raising awareness about GMOs one Idahoan at a time.